Yeah, massive, uh, massive uh, win for us, and I have to say I'm unbelievably happy and delighted uh, that we found again a way to to win this uh, football match. Um, before the week started, everyone told me it's difficult after the international break. You have a difficult uh, injury um, situation with injuries of key players right now. Two difficult away games at Middlesbrough and Stoke would be good if we stay unbeaten and. Um, yeah, if we can uh, finish uh, this week with perhaps two draws or something like this and to travel back uh, out of this week with uh, six points with back-to-back wins feels, uh, feels massive. And uh, also against uh, against a good, really good Stoke side, then in the end, uh, especially after the yellow-red card, we had to defend with 10 lads. Many players were injured during during the game. We had to play with players not in their normal position and then it was so difficult when all the crosses and... and Set pieces, corners, and wide area free kicks flew into our box. And Stoke is a pretty tall side. It was difficult for us to defend everything, and uh, it felt like they had good chances. Anyhow, then in the end, also to, to come away with a draw, or even with a win. And uh, that my lads found again a way to to win this game. That we are allowed to travel back with three points is massive, and um, I'm absolutely delighted. And uh, just can give them many, many compliments. So this spirit and what we're doing at the moment in this really tricky times in, in terms of injuries um, is, is outstanding. And I can't pray them enough. It's, it's uh, massive. So many talking points, as you say, Daniel. You touch on injuries. Can you? I know it's very early. It's just after the game. Can you give us any update on Tim Krul? Yeah, Tim Krul, he limped, limped out. Seems like a muscle injury. Um, I don't expect he will be ready to go again in three days or didn't look that great. So it seems like he will be out probably for, for a few weeks and, and this grueling schedule means and yeah, whatever, many games uh, anyhow. So it's it's not good news, but we have to assess him right now. I also had to substitute uh, Marcus Dieperman um, with a fear of concussion after he had a head against Hedwell and then went down and couldn't play further on. So also bigger uh, concern and also yeah, Timo Pukki was, was mooning about hamstring problems um, anyhow in, in this situation. I had to substitute him uh, as well, as well, yeah, Amy Buendia will also be out for the for the next game with a yellow red card, and it's uh, it's definitely tricky yeah, because we ended up with playing a bit like a four four one without any striker. Pshumislav Plachetta played a bit more like a like a striker, and on the wings we we played with Mario Francic and Jacob Lungi Sørensen. Uh, let's be honest, not really uh, not really wingers, and uh, yeah, we also played without the left fullback anyhow. So. It's a tricky situation, but again, that in these circumstances, we found again a way against a really good side who had a chance to overtake us on the table today with a win. So that again, we were able to, to find a way to win this game. It's, it's outstanding and it was probably not the prettiest uh, game in the world, but uh, in general, so a, a game full of full of mentality and fighting spirit. And uh, for that, I'm pretty, pretty pleased. Thoughts on Buendia's double yellow card? Yes, we have to accept it was was a bit due to his a bit emotion, his bit emotional way, and a bit that he's sometimes a bit naive. I think he was a player of the match uh, today. Because he was outstanding. His first goal and also the assist to Timo's goal, but also his workload and his pressing and his counter pressing. For me, by far the best player on the pitch. I was pretty delighted with him. Yeah, and then one situation was a foul situation, 50-50. The referee decided to give a foul against him in a yellow card. And you have to accept this, but he then should calm down a little bit and uh, has to be a bit more careful in each of each other in this situation. He was greedy to win the ball back and, and had the feet too high and didn't realize that the opponent was coming. And then, yeah, of course, you can give them a yellow card then and then the outcome is a yellow red card. And you have to accept this. Um, also, but due to, um, yeah, a bit uh, naive behavior, he apologized already in front of the group that he made our life that difficult and also that we have to play without him. Um, but it's part of his development. He's still a young player anyhow, and, and again, there was no bad intention or something like this. He's punished right now that he was was not able and not allowed to, to finish the game, also that he's not uh, allowed to start the next game and help us the next game, so that's uh, enough of punishment. Um, but it was no bad intention. It was more like a bit unlucky for him today, and that, um, yeah, also unlucky for us that he can't play because he was in red-hot form so far. Just final one for me if I can. I saw you giving Michael McGovern a big hug at the final whistle. If Tim Krul's out for a few weeks, how important is he and, and assess what he had to do tonight? Because it's not easy to go on in that situation. I can always uh, trust Michael McGovern. If I have to name a, a football player who is really uh, absolutely professional with a, with a top class attitude, he's, he's more or less never injured each and every day. He's, uh, he's never ill. He's uh, 
working the first one who goes out on the training pitch the last one who goes in his, his attitude uh, especially also like what he's done in the CV is, is outstanding he's always per perfectly prepared even if, he, if he's not playing and again he was massive for us yeah, because we had to defend all the set pieces on the corners with such a small side in the end and uh, it felt like each every cross and each every corner that flew in was, was unbelievably dangerous and The last two or three crosses, he came out and catch the ball and was was massive for us. And uh, he was also played also key part that we are capable to to win this game. And uh, if he has to play the next games, uh, I'm, I'm 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 not scared at all. We know that we have with him, uh, cool, the the best goalkeeper in the league. And of course, it's a big it's a big blow if he's not available. There's no doubt about this. But I know that I always can trust Mickey and and we I can always count on him. And he's a fantastic lad and a fantastic professional and. Uh, For that, we are all delighted. And uh, he played also his part in this three points. Daniel, well done tonight. Thanks a lot. Uh, just one for me, Daniel, if I may. Um, just on uh, Josh Martin, that was hard to believe that was his uh, first league start. Yes, I think uh, it was a difficult game for for him under under in such a physical game, and he had worked also a lot against against the ball. But he was uh, played a major role in our first goal, played a fantastic through pass to to Timo Pukki uh, for the third goal. So um, it was no coincidence and also no gift anyhow. Yeah, of course, we had to rest uh, Shemislav Plasheta today a bit because he was played so many minutes also in international duties. But Josh was the last week also. Uh, outstanding in training, so we, we can't play in with the whole group at the moment. But with a smaller group, he was for example out on on Sunday, and he was by far the best player on the pitch. And I got the feeling he's prepared right now to throw him in the mix. And he paid my um, my trust. Also, he paid back for my for my trust. And again, he has also a lot to learn, and we have to speak about a few things. He has to improve, especially against the ball and tactical behavior. But for the first game, I, I was pretty delighted and uh, terribly happy. Well done, Daniel. Cheers. Daniel, can I ask you about uh, Steeperman? You said he went off with fear of concussion. Um, I've heard, seen a lot in the press this week about um, concussion subs and uh, problems that head injuries in football can lead to issues in later life. Just wondered if I could get your thoughts on that. Yes, of course. First of all, it's a concern, but it's a contact spot and sometimes a sentence. I think it was a head against head to L and he went down and in the, in the first moment he seemed to be all right. Um, and she tried to play further on, so we still have hope that it's not not a concussion. And we all hope this. Of course, he didn't look too bad after the game, but he felt then sick during the game, and it's more or less the first time, first sign that uh, you have to fear something. And we couldn't risk any uh, anything in this in the scene. So we, even for points, we won't risk the health of of any human being in our in our squad. And for that, we had to substitute him. And uh, again, so I hope he can recover pretty pretty quick because we need him. He also played a. Fantastic uh, assist to to Imobu and and it's also important for for the link of our game and to the link to our strikers. And I hope he's available for the next game. But we will be pretty pretty careful and uh, we'll assess him. And uh, but I can't tell you the the final outcome right now. But uh, what I can tell you is that uh, with head injuries, you have to be unbelievably careful. Do you yeah. think that concussion subs may change that if the FA were to bring such a thing in? where you could get an extra sub for a concussion, for example, while he gets checked out. Yes, would make would make sense uh, if I'm uh, if I'm honest, but uh, more or less for each levy injury would would definitely make sense. But uh, again, so we accepted today the situation. We we use our substitution then, and uh, yeah, it's not up to me. So I trust the key people with the with the who are responsible for the rules to to find the right decision, um, and I'm pretty sure they will.